Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today is part seven of my fitness database series. If you haven't watched parts one through six yet, go watch those first and then come on back. And as a reminder, even if you're not into fitness, all of the techniques that I'm showing in this series are fantastic for any database that you want to build. I've got to remember to start showing off what we did in the extended cut in the next lesson. So what we did in the extended cut yesterday was we click on these headers here and it sorts. You click on it once and it sorts ascending, click on it a second time and it sorts descending. And you can do that with any of these columns. Ooh, ah, want to find the highest calories per serving? Boom, there you go. All right, pretty cool stuff. Now, I know in the last session in part six, I said we were going to start on the meals. I lied because one of the things that happens is when you start actually using a database, you discover all kinds of little things that you want to add to it. So I actually started playing with it and using it for some of my stuff, loading some of my food items into it. And I came up with a whole list of things I want to add. So before we get to meals, we're going to do that stuff first. And in the future, if I say we'll probably get to blank in the next lesson, don't listen to me. We will get to it eventually. We're going to get there. But uh, sometimes sometimes when I build a database, I, I, and I've showed this before in different, uh, in different videos. Sometimes I'll lay all the tables out, like in Excel. And then I'll, I'll map all the tables out first and plan all the relationships, plan all the forms. Sometimes I build a database like I'm doing with this one, where I just start building it and go as I go. It all depends on the project. This is more of like a going by the feel of it project. And this is one of those where I've been tracking everything in Excel. So I've kind of got it laid out how I want it in Excel because I've been using Excel for this stuff for myself for the past couple months. And now it's getting to the point where I want to put it into a database. So I've already got the, the roadmap laid out. And I showed you most of that in part one. But also sometimes too, it's nice to get like, for example, this food list, right? I want to get this as close to perfect as I can because when we start building other forms, like the, maybe the meal form or the workout form, I can just copy this and all the enhancements that are in here and just change some field names around rather than having to then add the same features to the next couple of forms. So sometimes it's beneficial to get this as close to perfect as you can and then do the next thing. So I got some more enhancements I want to do to both the food list and the food form before we move on to, to meals. But that's perfectly okay. It's part of database design to or, or software design in general to, to start, you know, you build it as a builder, as a, as a developer, then you start using it as a user and you see it a different way. Uh, like my website, for example, I don't use my own website as a student, right? I don't watch my own videos on my website. I mean, I, I do it for testing purposes, but I don't like actually take my course. So the feedback that I get is valuable. So here, this is a situation where I'm building a database that I'm actually going to use myself. So when I start really using it, then I see some things I want to do. All right, the first thing I want to do is I want to make it so that if you click on any of these fields on this list form, it displays the item over here because I had this happen while I was working on it. I closed this form without thinking about it. And then I clicked on the same item and notice it doesn't reopen that form. And I got no way to get back into that form aside from moving off of that and then back on it. So what I want to do is I want to make a function. Let's call it show food F. That'll show this and that function will run um, in the on current event like we have it now and in the on click events for these different guys. Okay. But I also want to check to make sure that this isn't already open on that record. So if I'm already on dairy, or if I'm already on this provolone and I click here and I click here, I don't want that code to close and reopen this again. Just leave it. So it needs a little bit of intelligence. All right. So let's go into here. Let's go into the code for the food list form. And I am going to create a new function, private function. Why a function? I'll explain in just a minute. Show food F. Now it's not gonna return a value, but I want it to be a function. All right, now I'm gonna set up a variable called uh, do open as a Boolean. We're gonna decide whether or not we should open that form. All right, let's set it do open equals false. We're going to initialize it to false. So by so normally we're not going to open it. Now, the first thing I want to check to see is, is that form open or not? If it's not open, we need to open it, right? So we're going to say if not is loaded food F, 
then the form is not open, open it, right? So do open equals true. And we'll, we'll open open it at the, at the end. Now, real quick, hit debug compile. You're going to get sub or function not defined. What is is loaded? Well, is loaded is a function I wrote to determine if a form is open or not. It's in the code vault. I'm going to head over to my website here and look for is loaded. And that should bring up the code vault entry right there is form loaded. And there's the code. It's real simple. It's just one line of code. This is the kind of stuff that's in here, though. There's lots of complicated stuff, and there's a lot of simple stuff, too. All it does is it checks to see if current project dot all forms form name dot is loaded is true. That's all. So we're going to copy that. If you're not a member or you're a silver member, get the typing. We're going to come back to our database. Let's go to our global module, and I'll just paste this in right here in the top, like right there. Okay, so now we got is loaded in here. Now we can easily check whether or not a form is loaded. I'm gonna close this guy and come back here. So now is loaded should compile. Well, it's not gonna compile because I didn't finish my if statement. All right, so the form is not open. So we gotta open it. All right, so else the form is open. Well, let's check to make sure that it's not on a null blank value. Okay, so if is null forms food f, uh, food ID, then it's on a null new blank record. So we want to open it again, right? Open the current one that's picked on. So do open equals true. Okay. Or it could be on a different item, right? I might've moved from record to record. So else if uh, forms food F food ID, is not the same as food ID on the current form, then it's on a different record. So do open equals true in that case. End if, and then end this if, okay? So we're checking all the situations and you have to check these differently. This alone will not test for that null value, okay? Because if you compare anything to null, the result is null, which is not the same as false. I know null math is really weird. So you got to check to see if the form is open first. If not, open it. Check to see if it's on a null value. If it is, then open it. Check to see if it's on a different food item. If it is, then open it. All right, and if all of these are false, that means you're sitting on the right record. You don't need to open it. So now we just come down here and say, if do open, this is why I put it in a variable, then do command dot open form food F comma, 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 chameleon, food ID equals food ID, which is what we did before in the on current event. Now, I can just call show food F from the different locations that I want to call it from. I'm going to call it from the on current event, which we already have one, and we're going to call it from the on click events in the other places. So first of all, the on current event is right here. It's currently, where is it? Right there. It's currently an event procedure. So I'm going to get rid of this. Okay. And those empty spaces. And don't worry about all of this is here. This is for the member stuff down here. Okay. Then I'm going to come back up here. And in the on current event, I'm going to type in equals show food F open close parentheses. All right. That's called an event handler procedure. All right. You make a function. You can put it there instead of having to put a code block in. If you want to learn more about event handler functions, just go watch this video. But now the benefit is I can easily copy that and put it in different spots. Watch this. I can select all of those text boxes and then stick it in the on click event for those multiple selections. And I copied the whole thing. Hold on. I didn't copy that to my clipboard. That's okay. I'll just type it equals show food open close parentheses, and that's it. Now I put that thing in all four of those text boxes at once. If you click on one individual one, you'll see them all in there. See that? That's how you can set properties for multiple selections. Same way you would do it with like back color or something like that. Okay, save it, close it. Let's, uh, I got my code window open behind that. Let's do a debug compile, just to make sure. All right, we're good. And now let me close this, open her up. 
And now I can move from record to record and it still does the same thing it did before. But here's the benefit now. If I close this accidentally and I just go to click on fruits, see, it fired in the on click event. Right, I can click over here, I can click over here. And notice it's not closing and reopening because it sees that it's open. If I go to a blank new record, it should check that null value. See, and it worked. Okay, so you gotta check for those values, check for those instances. Is the form open? If so, is it null? Right, if it's not null, is it a different item? And if it's any one of those, reopen the form. That's how you keep that synchronized. All right, so I got a bunch more housekeeping items like this. We're gonna get to even more cool stuff tomorrow. Like I said, I wanna get these forms as, as tweaked as possible before we start building new forms. So I got a, a list of stuff we're gonna do. And members, we got a short extended cut today. We're gonna do, uh, I'm gonna put an are you sure and that look up macros button so you don't accidentally overwrite stuff. And then uh, Kevin, one of the moderators came up with a good idea to do a for each loop for these labels up here that we color instead of having to do it in code for each one. So that'll be in the extended cut for the members. And for everybody else, that's gonna be your tech help video for today. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper my friends. I'll see you tomorrow for part eight. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.